Hey everyone, it's Morph here. Today we'll be looking at and discussing the Pokemon fossils. This series will focus on the origins and meanings of the different Pokemon fossils, and they will be divided into different videos explaining them in depth. I'll teach you about the meanings of their names, resemblance to real life creatures, and their fossils. Please excuse my pronunciations, as some of these words are really scientific and difficult to pronounce. So without further ado, here are the Pokemon fossils and their origins. First up, we have Kanto, Generation 1. With Kanto, we were given three different lines, which is the most we have ever gotten as of the time recording. First up, we'll be focusing on the Helix line, Omanyte and Omastar. Omanyte is the first evolution of the Helix line, and it's most likely based off of the Ammonidea or Ammonite. The Ammonite used to roam the seas between the Devonian and the Crustaceous Pelagene extinction event. The Ammonites had almost tentacle like appendages, which is what Omanyte and Omastar also have. Omastar and Omanyte might have also been based off of the Nautilus, which was a similar mollusk. Omanyte's name obviously comes from the word Ammonite, and originally it was going to be called S, as in escargot, the French word for snail. Omastar is very similar to its pre evolution, Omanyte. Although there are slight changes in both design and name, but I won't point out the obvious such as it spikes under the shell. Oh wait, I just pointed that out, didn't I? Amastar's name is pretty self-explanatory, but originally, in English, it was going to be called Cargo, which when matched with Overnight, would be called Escargo. According to the Pokédex, Amastar's downfall was its heavy shell, which eventually led to its extinction. The Helix fossil is very similar in design to the Aminadea fossil, as they both have their signature spiral shell, but some original artwork depicts it as a scallop seashell. In fact, in Japanese, the helix fossil is called the shellfish fossil. Next up, we have the dome line, with Kabuto and Kabutops. This line of Pokemon is very different to the last one, but they too are based off of aquatic creatures. Kabuto's design is thought to be based on a few different creatures. It could be the mix of a trilobite, horseshoe crab, and traditional Japanese Kabuto helmet. Kabuto's shell looks more alike to that of a horseshoe crab's, but the trilobites don't have that weird tail that the horseshoe crabs do. Kabuto may also be based off the dome shape of a Kabuto helmet, and its name comes from the samurai helmet too. Kabuto is the Japanese name for helmet, and Kabuto Gani means horseshoe crab in Japanese. In the Pokemon Red and Blue Beta, Kabuto's name was called At, as in Atlantis, which segues us nicely into... <laughs> Kabutops' beta name was Lantis, which like the Helix line, when combined with its pre-evolution, becomes Atlantis, the sunken Greek city. The end of Kabutops' name, Ops, is a reference to the Greek word Ops, which means face. So, Kabutops may loosely mean helmet face in English. Kabutops not only takes inspiration from horseshoe crabs, but also may have been based off of Yuri Terran, which are one of the largest known arthropods to have ever lived. The dome fossil, depending on the game or anime, takes its appearance from either the previously mentioned trilobite or horseshoe crab fossil. Finally, out of the prehistoric Kanto Pokemon, we have the Terror of the Skies. Aerodactyl is the only fossil Pokemon to not have any evolutions or pre-evolutions, not counting its mega form, of course. Aerodactyl may be based on a dragon or a pterodactyl, or more specifically, this pterosaur. I'm not even going to bother trying to say that. Aerodactyl's name could also come from Aerodactylus, which is a very small and cute pterosaur. Aww, look at its- Ugh! Oh! Its name could also be based on Aero, the Greek word for air, and pterodactyl, forming Aerodactyl. Aerodactyl's fossil is strange, as it isn't a rock like all the other fossil Pokemon. The fossil, Old Amber, is fossilized tree resin with a mosquito in it, like the one in Jurassic Park. Don't ask me how, but apparently Aerodactyl is supposed to be revived from a mosquito. I don't know, just, it's just how it is, okay? 
Thanks for making it to the end everyone. This video took me a long time to make. If you enjoyed it and want to see more episodes like this, let me know. It will be greatly appreciated. Subscribe and leave a like, and I'll see you in the next one.